All right, and five, four, three, two, one. We are recording. Welcome to the Danger Zone, Brendan Finn. What's up, dude? <laughs> Long time no talk. Um, so let me set this up, dude. Uh, let me introduce you to everybody Better who's up. listening. Brendan Finn is a very good friend of mine. Um, one of the, my friends that I actually went to his wedding, um, <laughs> which, <laughs> which says a lot, I guess he made that, that tear. Um, no, don't, Br- I don't remember much of that wedding, but <laughs> from what I hear, it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah, it was legit. Uh, so Brennan and Brennan Finn and I worked together in the military. We we're both in the same units together on two deployments together to Afghanistan and we we're special operations medics. So, uh, don't know if we'll be talking anything about that tonight, but we'll see. Let's, let's start out, Brennan. Um, what is, what is your take on the latest news about London, the the bridge attack? Yeah, I mean, that's not a very good situation over there. Um, and what I honestly, what I took from it, there's a lot of shitheads still running around. But two, that the British people are pretty badass. I saw some picture of like a dude running from the scene and he still had his beer in his hand and he wasn't like, he didn't want it to spill and shit. <laughs> And then speaking like of which story I'm, about this I'm pouring a whiskey right now. Just like Oh nice. What do you got going? Uh Talisker single malt uh 18 years. Yeah. Uh, been to this distillery. Yeah. But go ahead. Dude. Sorry. So but back to the like London thing and then there was another story about like this rugby player straight up spearing a dude that, you know, while he's getting stabbed, you know, it's just, I like to take good shit like that from it, saying that there's some badass dudes and chicks out there that stand up to that retardation. So you wouldn't agree with what the, uh, the London police are putting out as a uh, run. What, what is it? Their, their advice to do when, when there's attack. Have you seen that yet? Oh, I didn't see that. They got they're saying just run away. They're, oh, oh no 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 no, dude! It's like it's pretty bad. Oh, run, hide, and tell. Brit, run, hide, and tell. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, hopefully he doesn't run after you, dude. It just <laughs> you know it shows like like you said there there are some badass savages walking around. You know, yeah. That rugby player and oh, shit yeah. like that. People standing up. And, uh, yeah, from, I mean, there's a, th- the problem is there's a lot of dudes that just moved in and out of like the Middle East and then they go back home and no one really knows like who are like how many of these dudes are that just went over to like Syria fought for like a fighting season and, and then come back to Europe and no one has any idea how many of those guys are. Yeah. And that's trying to track all those dudes down. I don't know, man. It would seem, it seems like you would just say, oh, if you're the dude checking someone's passport, oh, you were in Syria? Um, hmm. Why? <laughs> you know, like, what, what were you doing there? Yeah, it's not and like they're going to be like, not coming back in the country. Yeah. You can go back there. It is weird. It's yeah. It's, it's. What do you think about it, bro? What do you? How do you take our um, fearless commander in chief's response? Well, first off, let's 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 hear like what <laughs> what I think about it. Um, yeah, I think it's happening too frequent, dude. Like they're doing something wrong, you know. And yeah, it's it's whatever they're doing is not working. Um, kudos to the people who stood up and like fought. That's that's yeah. what I would like to see more of is, you, you know, let's not mm-hmm. let's come together as a community and not let three dudes take on several hundred. You know, like yeah, man. In, instead I'm, of I'm instead of it. instead of run hide tell, how about like 
war cry, inspire How others, Russia, and dude. rush them. Yeah. If enough people rush them at the same time, yeah. I don't know. But I, th- I think it's major- still, majority it's of the people. To tell like 14 year old girls at a concert to go rush a dude, you know? Well, the, yeah. That's. Yeah. I mean. That gets into what else what else I was gonna say is there's I, I think there's a lot that's uh that the government of the UK is not doing to break up some of these like extremist cells within the UK. Um Yeah. I don't know. I mean I I mean they just there's a lot of people in that country that are just straight up coming off of like the fighting zones in Syria and shit, and they just roll back home. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not not a good situation. Yeah, but they're. Uh, have you seen? Uh, have you heard of this Tommy Robinson guy? Tommy Robinson. Yeah. No. Um, you should look into some of his stuff, dude. He. He's been, like, so he came out back in 2009. There was a parade for the, like, soldiers coming back from uh, Afghanistan or whatnot, from the U.K. And Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. He's the guy that got, like, hacked up, right? No, no. He's still alive, dude. Um, But he, he, uh, so they're doing this parade and all the... uh, there was a there was some 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 of the Muslim community came out and protested it and were like spitting in the faces of the mothers of these guys coming home and shit. So obviously some of the guys got pissed. Um, some of the the other English dudes and they made like a counter protest and they all get arrested. And it's it's been interesting. Um, I thought he was just kind of like, he he made a couple of videos where he drive through those Muslim neighborhoods where they're kind of like enacting Sharia on their own. And he'd get like, you know, punched through his window and stuff as he's driving through there and, you know, all kinds of crazy shit. And I thought he was just, I thought he was raising kind of awareness about, you know, extreme extremism being, uh, or kind of Sharia infiltration into some of the communities there. And, Turns out, dude, he has been like well, persecuted by the British government trying to silence that dude. It's pretty fucking crazy. Well, you know, you know my opinion on organized religion, Daniel. I don't think we need to go into that. Yeah. <laughs> it's stupid. It's pretty well, <laughs> well known. It's all pretty much retarded. Yeah. Um, it all can, it seems to. Anyway. There's two that come from the similar area too. But yeah, I'm just not a big fan of any of it. Yeah. Um. So, do you want to like tell these peeps how we met, or like that story in Raleigh? Oh, uh, dude. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Enough with the depressing shit. Let's fucking let's. Yeah. Let's get into fun shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. So, give a brief introduction of like so i didn't realize for the longest time that you were in the army before you came in the navy you want to talk about yeah. like what you did in the army and then we'll pick up oh yeah cool. like bring it to where yeah. we met at uh in north carolina mm-hmm. so i started out in army um uh pretty much right right around september 11th time enlisted and um I did four years in the infantry. I went to Iraq for over like over a year. <clears throat> so it was like having two Marine Corps deployments. Um, weren't you a two forty? Weren't you a, a machine gunner or something? Or what? Yeah, yeah. I was. I was a um, saw gunner. And oh, okay. I would on the convoys and shit. I would always be the you know in the turret, gunning, trying not to get fucking. My head shut off, I which <laughs> happened quite frequently over there. Uh, it was gnarly, dude. Iraq, 
I'm glad I was pretty young and dumb because now looking back on it, I'm just thinking, holy shit, was that place just a death trap? Yeah. You know? It's just like, especially if you're just doing mounted patrols rolling around, just waiting to get blown up, man. It's, and you're in broad daylight, and there's no tactics, just like the loudest things in the world <laughs> that you can hear coming down the road, yeah. and you just wait and blow, blow a fucking truck up. But... I digress. So then I got out of the Army, joined the Navy, um, and went through the whole Corman dealio. Uh, I think I might have met you in Great Lakes during the, um, you know, when, like, Chief De La Roca oh. <laughs> would do his little, like, workout sessions. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Oh, God. Yeah. Now that, you know, that that dude that <laughs> got kicked out of the Navy or yeah, he, where he is. He definitely ended up in the uh, the brig or something like that. Yeah. Um, for reasons we we don't have to get into. No, I don't, I don't, yeah. <laughs> on this you definitely program. don't need to do that. But, um, anyway, yeah, dude, I, I, I think uh, we then, probably, but we didn't, like, know each other, you know? Like, we, we might no, have seen no, each other or whatever. No, but you were like kind of boys with the Santos and, um, you know, I kind of ha- met you through that and we kind of started out at uh first recon under all those dudes. And then did we go to BRC together? I can't remember. No, I think you no. might've been ahead of me. No, dude, I was, uh, I think you were I was, ahead of me, right? I was after you guys, dude. You were after me. Yeah. Oh shit. So, the, but it wasn't too much far. It was like no. a class or something. Yeah. So I, I would see yeah. you throughout the pipeline and stuff, but it was like, yeah, yeah. We we got the first recon together, and the the thing is, like, even though we were at first recon together, us us sarks were like, we're in our platoons doing our thing. Like we hardly see each other unless we we're doing like, you know, even even when we we're at the clinic, we yeah. each had our separate like a office and stuff. Or something. Yeah, yeah. You're you're like you're gone. You're with your. The platoon the entire time. Yeah, so we'd like see each They're, other yeah. passing and stuff, and then we were deployed, and you were with a different company, so we weren't even like, you know, we'd be two clicks away from each other yeah. or even more, you know? For sure. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, that's how it was. Speaking of um, which, dude, how how fucking awesome was that deployment? The 2010 deployment? Yeah. The first recon. Actually, you know what's funny? I just watched the movie War Machine today on Netflix. I don't know if you heard about it. <laughs> so not War Machine, the the guy that uh, beat up his porn star girlfriend. No, okay. not yeah, not that dude. It's it's with like Brad Pitt, and he's supposed to be playing like Stanley McChrystal mm. when he takes over the effort in twenty two thousand nine. It kind of covers like the Marja invasion, and then that's when the Rolling Stone came, article came out. Yeah, dude. And he got fired. Remember all that? Oh shit! What what happened with the Rolling Stone article? So like, him and his staff basically were were out in Europe, and they were all drinking and stuff. And they had this reporter with him the whole time, and and he was just taking down all their quotes, and they're all drunk, talking kind of a lot of shit. And it got back to the president, and he got fired. Oh wow. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember that, but I do remember that deployment, at least parts of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you've had a couple uh, memory issues yeah. after the last one, so I think I it's, it's getting better though. One. The more I've talked to yeah. the guys that I was on that deployment with, it, it it's bringing back uh, some of those memories. But that's it, man. Glad uh, to hear it. It, it definitely was like gnarlier than I had remembered in my mind. I was like, I just thought it was like we had the greatest time and it was just a bunch of fun. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. It was, yeah. it was no, kind of, it was, a, it was a bitch, gnarly. dude. <laughs> it was a bitch, dude. Like, just basically, it was just we were in an area that was unwinnable. And yeah. they basically said, you know, no one 
has ever conquered Helmand. And we're going to just send you there, and we're just going to give it a shot and see what happens. <laughs> and it was a shit show, but it was it was good, man. It was good. Yeah. Dude, uh, you got rocked that deployment. What happened there? Oh, that rocket. That's funny you say that because you know that dude that was attached to us, um, Greg Gossie, Grossy, or whatever. He was again like a civil affairs type of dude. No. He took the dog home. Uh, I don't, I don't remember him, dude. Like I said, well, it's anyway, a little fuzzy. he was he was uh he was there when um that rocket hit our compound and um he's writing a book and stuff and like the late some lady had to like fact check all this stuff and call me and interviewed me about what happened and oh shit he wrote like a book how, you know <laughs> it's coming out <laughs> it's coming out this summer i guess oh what's it called you yeah know? it's called fred and me oh it's about the dog know. it's about the dog <laughs> yeah I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, that that was a cool little appointment. So you're just chilling in that room, and next thing you know, fucking boom, dude. Uh, recoilless, yeah, it, recoilless it, wrap around, right? It rocked us. It rocked us. Yeah, it was. I forget how many, how big it was, but it, it rocked us pretty damn good, man. I remember I was trying to do neuro games. <laughs> <laughs> and I was all fucked up. Yeah. I hear you. I got, I got hit by, um, well, not hit by, but uh, rocked by a couple of recoilless rifle rounds myself, and it's not fun. Yeah. They're a little big. Those things got some, <laughs> those things, but they have some punch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got some pepper. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so you were trying to so yeah, you're trying so. to do neuro exams on these dudes while you're fucked up, like <laughs> Dude, for sure. I was yeah. like, dude, I I couldn't pass a Mace exam yeah. right now and I was giving them. So, you know, obviously I erred on the side of caution if I thought dude was like concussed. Yeah. But then I was like, you know what, I'm probably concussed. I should probably get at least C T scan in. And um I think then we had this like mass cow kind of dealio come into our camp and I kind of had to do all that stuff. So it didn't really work out. Yeah. Um, whatever. By, and by that time I was like, you know what, whatever it's, <laughs> oh, fuck it. it's it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. But after that deployment, we dude, we made a clutch move of negotiating our careers. Um, You're welcome. Yeah. You, I would, I will, will admit <laughs> you led the charge on that. Um, I would say I was the second, uh, you know, the second loudest voice. And then everybody else was just kind of like, well, you know, uh, they just kind of followed along. Yeah. But yeah, I made it, I made a big gamble with you and Rodney's careers, but Hey, <laughs> Oh no, I no, I knew it was the right thing, dude. It was like they, they, what they were trying to tell us was fucking bullshit. It was like, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, we're phasing out, you know, this thing, but you just we'll we'll just deploy you again immediately. <laughs> we had just gotten back. They're like, yeah, just jump on this next yeah. deployment, and uh, we'll bring oh, you. Oh, and then, like we're gonna we'll take you out of deployment, so yeah. you can go to the schoolhouse. We'll, we'll bring like, you back halfway. I'm like, through deployment <laughs> I was like you guys are I, insane uh, uh, they honestly thought they were gonna they honestly thought we were gonna buy that though. yeah that's how stupid they thought we like, were you need you need a medic for every single you know patrol you're doing any yeah. con op that gets sent up like what <laughs> no they're, they're not just gonna replace us theater. yeah be like oh you know what we're gonna take these dudes out they gotta go to school and we're, we're already short uh, short on numbers like, who who's gonna come replace us? Nobody. Yeah, that, there is know. nobody to come replace us. Yeah. Like, so yeah, we made a good call on 
doing a little diversion to training first. Mm-hmm. Mm. Which, bring, which brings us to North Carolina. Oh, it's such a lovely state. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was, that was fun sitting back there in, uh, in class, <laughs> not paying attention, and fucking off the entire time. And then going out to Raleigh on the weekends and trying to drink as quickly as we possibly could. Yeah. And trying to get away from Vietnam, as they call it. That's Fayetteville, oh, North Carolina, God. for those of you that don't know. I mean, anybody who's ever been there would probably might vomit a little bit while they're driving through. <laughs> so I advise a bar bag as you're driving Dude, through that place. So, so we go up to Raleigh, and we have a hotel room, and we... Uh, we go to this Irish pub, right? That's where we started. Yep. I forget the name of that place, too. Was, that was usually the jump off. So for those of you that are listening, Brendan and I, this is like kind of, we had known each other. We'd already de- been on the same deployment together. We knew each other from like a working relationship, but we had never had the opportunity to kind of hang out together and like get to know each other. And... I think you had told, like, Dishonest had warned you, basically, like, yeah, you guys are going to get together, and it's going to be, like, an explosion. Like, it's going to, like... It's going to be bad. Or, like, yeah. I think we were, people were trying to keep us apart, to tell you the truth. <laughs> trying to, like... <laughs> they're like, you know what? For the, better, for the best of this fucking shop, we cannot let these two link up, especially yeah. on Liberty. So, but anyways... And, all their efforts were, you know, didn't work out because we totally yeah. went out. And we're at this pub, and I go over to the bar to order a drink, and I end up standing next to this fairly large giant man. And uh, I'm ordering my drink, so I'm sitting there waiting, and he kind of looks down at me. And, you know, I'm six foot, but he's looking down at me and <laughs> and I'm like, hey, uh, how, how's it going, you know? And he's not interested in making any type of, you know, friendly conversation. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, <laughs> cool dude, whatever. I like, don't even know if he, I don't even know if that dude had words. He, he literally looked like <laughs> he indicated via grunt. <laughs> so I, I was like, grunting. I was like, okay. All right, that's how you want to play this. All right, cool, cool, dude. You do you. All right, later, Dick. <laughs> and uh, I grab my drink. And I know we'll... someone. <laughs> you're like, yeah. I know someone very drunk yeah. and stupid who would, I'd love to see step to you. I was like, I know. Yeah, I, in my head, I was like, oh, I know who needs to meet this guy. Maybe it'll help warm him up, you know. And so I walk over to you, and you're. You're like, I mean, you, like you said, we had been drinking as fast as we could since we got there. <laughs> and I walk up to you and I'm like, Dangerously. dude, you're like, whoa, where you been? I'm like, <laughs> dude, you won't believe this. Uh, that dude over there just told me to fuck off. <laughs> uh oh. And then it was and like I'm, a goddamn. Like, point across the bar, you're like, where is this motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Uh, I point like right away. I'm like, oh, he's right over there. <laughs> and you, oh dude, no! And, and you didn't hesitate. You just like marched right up to him, and just, he was like leaning over the bar. Oh, you like God. tap on his shoulder. You're like, hey. I thought he was standing up. I thought he was standing up. You're like, hey. And then I I tried tapping. I just see this black expanse. <laughs> Of a man's back, and I'm like, is that is this dude wearing like shoulder <laughs> pads or something? And like, like I thought he might have been wearing the stuff that hockey goalies wear. Like yeah. his shit was that wide. I go, <laughs> and he turned around and looked at me, and gave me the look like, like he was contemplating whether to fucking literally take me by the head and toss me out of the bar or 
flicked me out of the bar like a little ant. <laughs> Dude, he was like and he was like an NFL defensive lineman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somehow, I don't know why, he just walked away, and I could not fucking believe it dude i totally i was i was totally expecting us to just get in a fight and what's funny is like as you're having your short conversation i just walk up right next to you guys and i'm like ready for this to just this whole situation to ignite and i'm just like all right i'll have a shot of whiskey and <laughs> so i'm sitting there ordering a drink as you're like tapping on this guy <laughs> i was totally just like ready yeah. to like be taking the shot well, as, as, well. as i'm getting thrown out um, by you this man, well, you might as well have a drink as you're watching the show go down. Oh, I don't think I was going to be watching. I think he was going to have your head in one hand and mine in the other, and just kind of pick us both up and just throw us through those front huge windows. Um, the guy looked like he probably could have done it. <laughs> yeah, he was. He he was a large man. But for whatever reason, he was Very like, "No mercy," and like he just walked off, left us there. Um, yeah. So then we stumble out into the streets after, you know, going to a different dance. I think I ended up in a dance club for a little bit. And, uh, is this night I got, it's not, it's just a night that we got another big fight. Yeah, no. So this was like the oh. fight, fight that didn't happen. Yeah. And then, yeah. So then we ended up in a brawl. Yeah, no. Um, so we, we're walking down, and I think you were a little you were a little more messed up than I was, and I'm kind of like helping you down the street, kind of watching over you. That's like, probably a fair assumption. Like a like a guardian angel that I was, just looking over you. Yeah. And uh, so I noticed I noticed there was these like there was these like five bros that were hanging out, and they all had the tap out shirts, and you know affliction or affliction t-shirts and tap out hats and yeah. um, just a couple of college bros and they were kind of laughing and giggling amongst themselves and they're in a little group on a corner and you like you're walking you like fall into this like picket fence and I have to like pick you up and they're kind of like laughing at that and I'm just like okay whatever and we walk across the street and <laughs> you start pissing on this tree and uh they started like fucking making fun of you and shit. And so you like finish and you like go over there and you're like, what the fuck? And, uh, they're, they're like making fun of you and shit. And, uh, I mean, some of this is kind of blurry too, but so they're like, <laughs> yeah, there's like the one bro that's talking the most shit. Right. And you're, you're staying pretty like cool and clear. You're just like, Oh yeah, dude, like fuck you, you know? And he's like spouting yeah. off, shit like oh man i'll fuck you up as his as his little bros like holding him back and like pulling him back down the sidewalk and they end up like 20 feet away from us and their other three bros are standing in front of us and next thing i know like a little ninja you just like he said something and you just like ran in between these guys these three guys that were in front of us and ran all the yeah. way and i just see you like flying in through the air I see like Brennan just flying through the air and like collide with this guy <laughs> and all his, his three bros that were standing in front of me, they like watch you. They just like turn and they're like, Oh my God, he's running over there. This is actually happening. Like this guy's for real. <laughs> we, we picked on the wrong guy. And, this guy's real stupid. <laughs> yeah. And then they like, they see you hit him and then they all just like turn back to me and I just, I was like, okay, we're in it now. <laughs> so I just started, start, we're in it to win it. I, throw, I started throwing punches <laughs> and I just like, and I just see you with these two guys, like kind of going across the street and like rolling over into the fucking grass. And then I'm like, all I know is I got to like fight my way <laughs> towards like you so we can like, you know, get the whole back to back coordinated response. Yeah. Meanwhile, our other buddies just across the street hanging out, getting hot dogs, like totally oblivious. Uh, we won't talk about what he was doing. Yeah. But <laughs> so next thing I know, I see you like fly off of this ledge on like onto the concrete and like I'm fighting my way over to you. This dude tries to like 
get me in a guillotine. It was fucking hilarious. And uh, so I find my way over towards you. And next thing I know, like, <laughs> you just come up off the ground. And you're like, all right, like, fuck you, yeah, let's go. And uh, there's just blood <laughs> pouring down your forehead. And I'm like, I get to your side and I turn around. I'm like, yeah, all right. And we're like so ready just to take on the five of them. And um, so somebody had hit you with like pulled out brass knuckles and hit you. And yeah, I remember that. It left a nice little mark, didn't it? Yeah. It, I mean, blood was just like pouring down your face, but you're just like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> and these, uh, all of a sudden, this, made for a really nice hangover the next day. Let me tell you. All of a sudden, the voice of reason came running out of the darkness, and he goes, "Y'all need to stop. This man need an ambulance." Ambulance. <laughs> and that was our call to be like, and, "Ambulance means there's some cops." <laughs> yeah, and well, we were we were ready to go, and these guys just like they started making the connection. Oh shit! Like this guy's got blood on it. Like this is bad, and they all fucking took off running. And we we quickly made our way to the curb and jumped in a taxi and made it back to the hotel. But yeah, uh, the cops are probably like, "What in the hell just happened?" Yeah, but we we're gone. But yeah, gone. Yeah, thanks Glad to that. Rather. Thanks to that, you know, noble community servant that was out there that night. That just. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> So yeah, that's the first night Brennan and I really hung this out together. This man needs an ambulance. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's the first time I, we, I did we need hung an out. ambulance. <laughs> what Definitely you needed stitches. You you had you had uh you had me. Yeah. <laughs> we threw that you, thing swelled up so bad. We threw you in the shower, and then you're yeah, like. Right. I can't remember. I think we just let you just kind of sleep on it, and then you woke up like stuck to your sheets. But yeah, that was probably definitely a concussion. Maybe I don't know. Who knows? Oh man, I just but thought of I thought I thought of another night. story of when we were in Fayetteville, but we won't definitely won't get into that. Um. <laughs> Uh, Rodney shit. was like, "What the hell happened to you guys?" We're like, yeah. Um, well, it all started with that glass of whiskey, mm-hmm. and then it kind of went downhill from there. Oh yeah. When when we were like, I ordered like Knob Creek or something, and you're like, "Yeah, all right." He's like, "I'm just gonna pound my beer so I can drink that." <laughs> yeah, let me just yeah. pound the rest of this beer so I can get to that whiskey. We were making real, yeah, that's real good normal, choices. That's what that's what normal people do, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, fun times. No, they don't. And that's we fun. we always had a blast in class. All those nerds up front, like trying to cor- correct the instructors oh and God. stuff. Well, you know the uh, Merck manual says that blah 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 blah. You're wrong. <laughs> the molecular structure of morphine is such that you cannot give it like that. It's like, dude, shut up. <laughs> Oh, shit, Mr. Price just like accessing the Matrix when he's talking about doing a hard exam. <laughs> yeah, just like he was definitely going into the Matrix. For, he was just literally, you know, actually now that I know about him, I think he was having a little absence seizures, dude. Oh, dude, or yeah, they're called absence absence seizures. But he would just like he would have a fake stethoscope hanging out in front of him, and he's just like. He would start talking about okay, yeah. and then you're going to like the S one node, and then blah blah blah. blah. And it was all about like heart murmurs and like different shit. And then yeah, also, then sure. all of a sudden, he would like tilt his head back, and his eyes would roll back in his head, and he'd just be like spouting out all this information. And it was it was like he like when his eyes rolled back, he was like accessing all that information from the from the matrix and just passing it on to us, which we weren't absorbing any of it. Um, yeah. Because he was like... Oh, we, were after, absor- after- we, were, we were absorbing all sorts of stuff, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm an artist, we all right? We absorbed what we needed to absorb. I'm an artist. 
as long as it's art, then you are. then you're okay. Mhm. Oh man, I fucked up my back the other day. It's not feeling too good. Well, dude, you're you're a learned doctor now. If if as if we weren't before, yeah. so now you can fix it. Um, yeah, I just tweaked it. You know, you only tweak your back really bad. And- Sucks for like days. Yeah, I kind of tweaked mine the other day. Yeah. Ended up with a compression fracture. Didn't feel so good. Oh God! <laughs> How'd you do that? Uh, you know, lift and stuff. Yeah, you've been going nuts though on the uh, with the gym stuff, haven't you? Yeah, dude, I'm just getting back into it, man. It uh, I had to take off for that. It was definitely hard. Not the problem is I I was li- I was doing a heavy lift without my gear and yeah i was already injured so i knew i shouldn't have in fact um the nice thing about having an older brother around is like he's always giving you good advice doesn't mean you take it but I'm pretty sure the last thing he said to me before yeah. i did this lift was hey make sure you don't do anything stupid this weekend and lift something heavy i was like oh don't worry dude i got this um and then you went and go ahead and lift something heavy yeah but there you go. Yeah, so uh, I'm coming off of that now, just getting back into the gym, and it feels fucking great, dude. Uh, yeah, working it out sucks so good. being down, man. Working out so good for you. Yeah, I know. It just sucks when you're down with like a little injury, and you're like, can't do shit. Yeah. What do you, you I come mean, back? Try to come back too early, and then you hurt yourself again re-injure it, it just sucks. yeah it's it's a weird balance like you don't want to lay up too long and like become stagnant but you got to give yourself a little bit of time i think the key is like finding like don't don't get off the wagon like totally i think it's you really got to yeah. dial in and try and find other exercises you can do to just kind of like stay in it because it's hard when you just like it's it's not cool when you're like you're used to like lifting all this weight, you're getting stronger and stronger and all of a sudden boom. Injury yeah, and it's I like I can't do this anymore. And you're like, fuck. And it that's that's kinda like depressing in and of itself. It's like so you feel like oh, oh yeah, fuck, I just need to get sidelined. Like I don't even feel like doing other shit. Cause that's like weak ass bullshit. But that's like the shit you should be doing, you know? Like you should probably be going to the Absolutely. pool and like swimming or, you know. Do another show. Yeah, I'm definitely going to change it up, man. I'm definitely going to change it up. I'm going on PT, physical therapy, in like a couple weeks for it. So nice. See what they say. Dude, yeah. I mean, you're, (sighs) I'm looking at your picture you gave me to put up on this video. It's just like you're a physical specimen, dude. You got to, you got to maintain that. Yeah, right. That was, that was last (laughs) year before I started PA school and I wasn't like, fat pile of shit what's the what's the story behind this picture dude the the sign says uh what careful old tree do not climb or something like yeah it's weird it's um i was at this beer festival actually in in seattle actually in redmond and i was pretty drunk and uh there's like this tree and it looks fucking super weird. I'm like, oh, I gotta get a picture with this thing. And it's like, apparently it's like ancient, man, this fucking tree. It's oh, so wow, fucking old. It's been there forever. And it's, I don't even know what kind of tree it is. It doesn't even look like a tree. And it doesn't have any lot. greenery it's on it either. It's like, I know it was, it's crazy. It doesn't really, <laughs> I don't know how it's still alive. It doesn't really do anything. Dude. Have you heard about, that trees communicate with each other. Um, you talking about the movie with Mark Wahlberg? Uh, no, I'm talking about science, bro. Oh no, I didn't. I've not heard of that one, dude. Apparently, like, they're just finding this out. Um, that trees, like, you know, like how microbiome and stuff like that's becoming a big deal. Well, like all yeah. that, all that, and their ground and stuff, and you think about like parasites, like attacking certain trees and stuff like that. Apparently, they're finding through studying all that stuff 
the trees are actually communicating with each other and they're like if one tree's like infected or whatever they'll like you know how their roots are all go together and stuff like that they'll yeah save more resources for the tree that's like wounded they'll like shift really? like they won't take as much resources the other ones around it they'll like try and save their their like tree friend wow Dude. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited about that shit. Um, because I fucking love trees. I love the woods. Like, I love plants. Trees are good. That's why I'm a trees meat eater, are very dude. Good. Um, I'm a meat eater because I, <laughs> I can't, I can't stand, dude, I can't stand vegans, bro. They're just like, they're killing all these plants, dude. It's not cool. Like, what do these plants no do? For it. What do these plants do to anything except give us oxygen? Right. Exactly. Like they're, they're just helping us out and I'm killing and eating the things that eat what gives us oxygen, you know? So for sure you're doing, you're doing the world a favor. Yeah. So you absolutely are. I'm decreasing the carbon footprint by taking, you know, more animals off the earth so they're not, you know, passing methane gas and stuff like that. You know. There you go, bro. Works, dude. It definitely does. So, how's PA school, dude? It's, it fucking was hard, man, but I'm done, I'm done with the didactic year, so that's cool. Um, it was, it was a lot of work, man, a lot of, a lot of reading, a lot of studying, just, it was crazy. But, you know, it's not done. It's only the classroom part of it's done. This summer, I got to write, like, a big paper and do research and shit. And then the next uh, year or next September, on, in September, I start my uh, clinical rotations. And that's when I'll be, you know, moving around and working in the hospitals and whatnot. Nice. Not really. Yeah, dude. I'm not I'm jealous for, at all. I'm just happy to be out of the classroom, dude. <laughs> dude. Oh my god, dude. There's so much fucking, so much work, dude. And yeah, it was just like they would throw these like assignments in, and you're like, like the last one. They're like, oh, here, write this this complete plan for managing a new diabetic patient, and you gotta mm. like figure all their insulin out and write all their plan out and write all the scripts out. It's just, you're like, holy fuck, dude. Yeah. And then once you work at a clinic, it's all like recommended formulary stuff, right? It's just like click, click, click on a computer. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you still got to write notes, but a lot of it's, you know, they got drop down menus and they may get a little bit easier. So you don't know how to write everything out, you know? Dude, as much of a, like, when when it comes to talking about healthcare, it's people. A lot of people don't realize how much it goes into training the healthcare provider and like how much it costs alone. But oh like, yeah, dude. Dude. Yeah, like to make a doctor, you I mean, or you know, you got to go through all this, all the schooling, all the residencies, all the internships, you know. Yeah. All the fellowships. It's it takes time, man. I I personally it's think just so much shit to know. I personally think our health healthcare system's fucked, dude. Like, I, oh yeah. I don't think sure. I don't I mean, think o- been, I don't think Obamacare been, did anything good for it. I don't think the whatever we're trying to do now is fucking doing anything for it. Um, no. It's it's just broken, dude. It's fucked. It's like it's pretty fucked up. You know, you know if you know what makes sense if the two sides like work together. Yeah, Imagine that's that. that's they came up with a plan that had like better good things from each perspective, you know. You nailed it, dude. You nailed it cuz like and yeah. They just won't do that though. They won't. They cannot. They're incapable of fucking doing that. Yeah. It's sad. And you know, meanwhile, you know, pharmaceutical companies run so much of that shit too. It's like it, it's it's fucked from like so many angles, you know. But, oh yeah, 
for sure. And then like that, we even like the the cures to things. Like we we have the capability to research and like find out how to do a lot of this shit. It's like just what do we want to push? Like where's the money going to come from to fucking do it? You know. Um, well, you hit the nail on the head. It's all about money, man. Dude, yeah. And I guess that's why it's like it seems so fucked up is because you're talking about something that's like a very emotional topic, you know, like people dying of this or that and like cancer and f- all these fucked up things that really pull on people's emotions because you're dealing with like death, dying sickness, you know, like long-term chronic pain shit. And then you have the the other side of it that's like the political side that's just so like fucked up but also just cut and dry all about money. You know? Oh, for sure. That's all they care about, dude. But, I mean, who knows what these clowns are going to come up with next. They all need to go, dude. Like, fucking... They're terrible. All, yeah. They're just terrible. I I mean, if you want to get into a little more politics... um, Dude, I, I your I, show. I just like the two party systems bullshit. It's just like people need to wake the fuck up and just like elect. We need to get more diversity in there. Like, I think I in, 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 in I think the argument is like, well, we need one side to win so much that they can just like push their agenda through. Like, well, how fucking Do well? Everything. How fucking well has that been working? Uh, it hasn't at all because you're all a bunch of lying pieces of shit. Um, yeah, they, it's like they won't. It used to work where, like, it used to kind of work where, you know, there would be like, all right, you want this, the other side wants this, but yeah. let's make our, you know, make compromises and come up with something that we both kind of like, but we don't get everything we want. And everybody kind of is okay with, yeah. But they don't, they don't do that shit no more, man. And it's just all, it's like you said, the shit's broken. Yeah, it really You've is. Got to be hard pressed to find someone who would tell you that our political system's running just and brilliantly right now. Well, uh, the, the <laughs> that's av- pretty obvious. It ain't the average person puts too much stock in the presidency as well. It's like. When, when in reality, oh, it's, yeah. it's like Congress has so much fucking power. And you, you've seen what the executive orders does just get overturned by, you know, Trump or whoever, or like whoever comes after Trump can fucking undo them, you know? So, yeah. The long lasting stuff is done by the Congress, Senate, or, you know, the Supreme Court. But it's just, it's fucked, dude. That's all I want to say. Enough about that shit. I just wanted to say it was fucked. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Dude, so, what, I got a about... question for you. Okay, How did you like my wedding, dude? Dude, that was legit. Um, it was fun, wasn't it? I, I like Albuquerque, dude. Um, Albuquerque? The whole Breaking Bad area. I, I, think it's uh-huh. a, I think it's a beautiful area. You got the mountains there. Um I, re- I rode my Harley, first long trip on my Harley. Oh, that I bought from you. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, bought my Dyna from Brendan and proceeded to start turning into a Mad Max bike. But, uh, yep. Dude, you needed it more than me, dude. That was a brutal trip. I was misbehaving on my on that motorcycle and. <laughs> I was like, you know what, Daniel? Daniel would do better at this than me. <laughs> I wasn't gonna get into that, but uh, I was gonna, I was gonna save you from. That. Yeah, we don't, we don't have to. I was just, <laughs> just keep it there. Yeah, you said it. You said it really well. Yeah, yeah. you were, you were failing at, at the motorcycle ownership, but um, yes, yes. <laughs> I put it to some good use, dude. It's fun. I actually that reminds me. I need to upload a video where I'm practicing standing up on the seat. Uh, Shut up, seriously. And doing, doing some off-roading in it, yeah. And then uh, I'm probably going to ramp it 
over a creek here pretty soon. So um, it was nice knowing you. Yeah. <laughs> Do your thing, man. It's been fun. Yeah. Um, dude, but your wedding was, was a blast. The, uh, was. that lo- location out there, that lodge was legit. The, the meeting of the groomsmen at that biker bar, the famous biker bar was like, that was legit. And. Oh yeah. That biker bar where I was begging you not to give me a shot of whiskey. And that's exactly what you guys did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, no, I don't want tequila. I'm not drinking tequila. So the bar buys me a shot of fucking Jack Daniels, which is even worse. Dude, and then the dancing. That's See, okay, so now that we're talking about weddings, um, so I'm a professional best man. I know you didn't choose to pay for my services as that, but... I give very ep- what? I give very epic speeches. I'm actually shamelessly plugging myself right now. I'm a best man yeah. for for hire. If anybody out there that maybe you just have a bunch of kind of mediocre friends and you need to pull That's another movie. You need to pull pull <laughs> That's your, another movie. You need to pull your way. you need to pull your ace of spades. Just, you know, get in contact with me and I'll come in and be your best man. But Okay. Dude, uh, so I've been at a couple of weddings. Your wedding, uh, what I look for in a wedding, okay, is let's speed through all the fucking bullshit part and let's get to the yes. drinking, the eating, and the like, not so much the eating, but like eating a little bit, then like drinking a lot and uh, party. Like let's dance. Mm-hmm. I love to dance. So at your wedding, I think, the sermon went way too long. Who was the dude that like was a uh, the stand in? Oh, I know, dude. I uh, was, yeah. I, I got mean, it. It was a little bit long, dude. I, I almost I got, passed out up there. I gotta say that was brutal, dude. I was like, I, I went through my head movies. I was like, okay, like what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh no, wait. Well, this is this is still happening. Like we're still talking about something, dude. I, I know. I, but. I mean, shit. So that, I tried. He yeah. went. He went off. But um, I'm shooting you straight. I mean, I'm giving an honest assessment. Yeah, I hear you. No, I agree. But I, the, I totally agree. The on that. dance party was legit. Boom. Yeah. And once Music it got was going, legit, yeah. it, was, it was awesome. And then the like the going. whole the whole like what what is it like Mexican traditions where you're like dancing in circles, like everybody's holding hands and like going through yeah. each other and stuff. That dude, that was cool. The La Marcha. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun, man. I was getting scored, just like crouching over and, <laughs> you know, I'm like, dude, is this getting, is this, can this be over? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I didn't want to get like excommunicated the first day I'm married. They're like, this fool can't even finish the La Marcha. Dude, what are you talking about? We, we, we ended up back in your hotel room continuing to party like all night long. It was oh, like it was a dance uh, party in your room. We went. It was going to like four in the morning, and then I don't even know what time I woke up. I was so. Oh man, we owned. We straight owned that hotel, man. Yeah, with that flute. <laughs> deedly, 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 deedly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it was a good, good flout. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. Yeah, dude, I did. I I had a good time out there. I was glad I made it out there. Um, in one in, in one piece, dude. That motorcycle ride got a little got a little hairy there at the end. Uh, well, so in the beginning. So you're like you're like on all forms of media, man. You're on like the internet. You're on podcasts. You're on fucking in live person you're on tv man you're everywhere what are you, what are you getting at dude i'm not on twitter i'm just saying you're, <laughs> you're out there i like it yeah. you're out there yeah yeah dude um i just i like i like creating and i like having good conversations with people that's what kind of led into the podcast 
but well, it's a perfect form for you, dude. What about this? Um, okay, well, I was about to go way too deep. Let's uh, let's back up. The uh, let's talk about recovery a little bit. Okay. So, like, if you want to start with like what kind of leads to the long laundry list of musculoskeletal issues we deal with post, you know, like basically how we go hard and then end up broken at the yeah. end or well, there's multiple. if you want to talk about the TBI stuff or whatever. Yeah. And like what, yeah. you, what you've done. I mean, yeah. Well, dude, there, there's multiple factors, but like the wear and tear in your body. And then if you like leads to just, big time arthritis, muscle strains, you know, and vertebrae injuries where you got compression fractures like you were talking about and disc problems. I mean, you name it, every joint is going to be affected. And then, um, you know, the TBIs and the concussions, they can, you never know how that shit's going to go because they could be kind of mild or they could be pretty, severe moderate to severe and leave some like long-term effects on you and that doesn't just go away you need to you gotta like you gotta rehab that just like you would have to do anything you know yeah and there's a lot of like science out there like they're trying to figure out what's the best way should you just you know not do anything just gonna have a complete brain rest or should you kind of get them back early and try to do light stimuli and, and kind of a stepwise fashion. There's a lot of different, you know, research going on with all that. I'm interested in what do you what, think, man? I'm interested in what they're doing with stem cell therapy and CRISPR. Are you tracking oh. that? Not really, not a whole bunch. No. So CRISPR is like this new, like, uh, so you know how they talk about, like, we're we're on this graph, right, where the expected age is just going to keep increasing until basically we become, we basically cure uh, death, the disease of death, which is aging. Like, you get so old and your fucking cells die and all that shit, right? And eventually, like, yeah. your organs start shutting down and all that shit. And then you have death, um, you know, which you live to, like, 100-something or whatever. And then at some point, you're just fucking done. Uh, well, there's this basically this theory, like, we're on this, like, huge bell curve. Like, the increase of, like, advancements in technology is, like, so rapid right now. And we're, it's like constantly going in a curve up, but it's getting exponentially like faster, better. Everything with technology is getting better and better, like exponentially. It's like why they already have like yeah. quantum computers and shit that basically know everything we're going to do before we do it. Uh, so, so with that curve, you have like age your your life expectancy is increasing as medical advances with technology like technology is advancing so like medicine's getting better and they're like curing all these things that the aging processes have and eventually you like reach immortality as long as you don't like you know get fatally shot or stabbed by some fucker you know but yeah so that's where we're headed apparently crispr is like a huge advance in this where they found this, uh, you know, this, this molecule set that basically is called CRISPR and it goes in and it rebuilds your, uh, your like your DNA. D DNA. It's recombinant DNA technology. Yeah. Which is like, you know, you're, you're, you're extending the telomeres on your DNA and, um, so, but it's also like fixing cells. It basically goes and recognizes cells that like, are either, you know, dead or like the code is wrong, you know, because like when you're, when yeah. your DNA is rep re replicating, your cells replicating, the older you get, like the worse it gets at it. And like there are mistakes that happen. And that's Absolutely. where you get like fucking cancer and all that shit. 
So what this does is it's like reading the DNA of like the stuff you already have and it's making corrections. It's like, Oh wait, no, we don't need that. Like this is how it's supposed to be. And so that's supposed to be like to cure a lot of other things. Like besides just like extending the life of your DNA or, you know, your telomeres, you're talking about like repairing neurons and like other cells, you know, whereas, yeah, that's still a little ways away, but I know I've, I've read about a little bit about CRISPR. So that's the stuff I'm interested in. I actually signed up for medical trials. Um, oh, really? Yeah, cool. I, don't, I don't mind being turned into like the human cyborg project. So, just become a cyborg, dude. Yeah. Uh, like universal soldier, bro. Dude, if they come up with a better robotic arm than the one I have, which is a long ways off. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'll do electric surgery. Yeah, just take my arm and fucking replace it with that stronger, better robotic arm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Can they give me a new back? Yeah, dude. Fuck. I could use one of those. Could you imagine just like, oh, all of a sudden I can carry like fucking four tons on my back. <laughs> How fucking yeah, awesome that'd I can. be. That'd be cool. Yeah. They'd be like, all right, guess where you're going. We're just going to send you to Syria and let you kind of do your thing. Yeah. What would your thing be? Would it? Would you just Syria? Like, yeah. Hopefully calling in airstrikes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, hopefully. Or like shooting, shooting laws and. Eighty-fours, maybe. Hopefully, we got something better than that. If you can carry four tons in your back, dude, like you need to be doing yeah. something a little more legit than shooting AT4s and laws. Like, what are those going to do? To what are those going to do to ISIS? Get, give them some fucking, maybe kill one dude, maybe like give some dude some like shrapnel bleeders, and then you know give some guys TBI. Like, what? <laughs> I'll just carry a fifty cal on my back. Yeah, dude, that's what I'm talking about. It's like me strapped to your back on like a tripod with like two gals, like, and a 50 cal in the middle. I just throw it out there on the tripod and just start lighting things up. (laughs) Dude, yeah, turn turn me into like Inspector Gadget. That would be fucking awesome. Um, Yeah, you could use an Inspector Gadget dick. What? <laughs> Dude, what do you think about the like what what did you think? I know you mentioned that show about how fucking big of clowns some of the commanders were, like that Brad Pitt Netflix show. Oh, the War Machine? Yeah. What do you Yeah, that it, it's you think it's pretty it's spot on? Basically, they are just like it's pretty spot on, man. And it was like basically from day one, we kind of knew that we couldn't really win the war over there. It's just it's a situation where it's just like unwinnable. Yeah. And then like how counterinsurgencies are like ridiculously hard to do. Well, with the way we currently fight wars, yeah. It's like... They're hard in general. Yeah. But, I, but the way we're doing it is not helping at all. No, I mean, the whole thing was messed up. But... What have are you, you going to do? Have you heard my war, warlord theory? Like... for a, warlord theory? Yeah, for Afghanistan specifically. No. What you need is guys like ourselves. Um, Just become warlords. Who are over, over there plugged in a village, but the pro, like the thing is, we ne- we like we volunteer and like we never leave, and so we just basically get put in power over that you know that area, that district, and you basically you know hook up with some of the elders in the area, you convert to Islam and you like marry some of their daughters or whatever, you know, 
you don't have to actually yeah. believe this stuff. You just, you know, tell me that you have. And then once your family, it's like now, now you're in, right? So, mm-hmm. so now you assert your power and it's not this whole, Hey, fuck this dude. He's from out of area. Like we'll just wait for the next guy to come here, you know, and take advantage of him. Yeah. But then you got to stay in Afghanistan. Yeah, I know. Like I said, it would be, you know, it would be a tough choice. This is like, you know, a very theoretical situation, but I think it could work. But you would have to have If guys. you had to be in Afghanistan or Fayetteville, where would you go? Afghanistan. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I just, I just shot off the cuff <laughs> there. <laughs> Fay- <laughs> Fayetteville's pretty bad, dude. Yeah, it's not, not where you want to be. Mm-mm. Not where you want to be at all. But unfortunately, we found ourselves there, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. So, um, how many podcasts have you done, dude? Um, I think this will be eight. Wow. So, we're still, we're still in the beginning, dude. And, but having seen a lot of other podcasts and listened to them, uh, I think we're, we're doing pretty good. And I like it. Uh, when do they, do you just like sign up and you can just listen to whenever you want, right? Yeah, dude, just on, I have a YouTube channel. And so it's, that's how I kind of got into podcasts was watching Joe Rogan. So I, I like watching them and I'm not necessarily watching the whole time, but I'll just, I'll put it on and I'm really just listening to it. And then if they're talking about something or maybe getting a little animated, you kind of like look and see what they're doing. And I think it, it's a better experience to actually see it. And that's kind of how I wanted to start is by putting it out that way. Cause somebody can always just listen to the YouTube video. Yeah. Um, but then I also upload them on SoundCloud and I'm waiting for approval to get my iTunes podcast, so then it'll be on iTunes, which apparently can take a oh, while. Nice. But I've already applied, and I'm waiting to hear back. I'm wondering if they rejected my first podcast because of the shit me and my brother were talking about. Oh, they gotta be. It's gotta be like. Is there, like, rules and stuff What you can talk uh, about? I mean, it's just, you know, how fucking PC shit is getting where, you know, they want to silence any quote-unquote hate speech or this or that. And Oh, yeah. So they they, they actually have somebody listen through the pro- podcast, like, in its entirety to before it gets approved. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Who, who's who's that person? That's what I want to know. Like, it's not, you know. Yeah, a lot of power. I'd probably do better with the AI if that was what was listening through it, you know. But, uh, you know, you get somebody and maybe they're a little, their political views are, like, completely opposite than yours. And they're like, no, fuck this. This is hate speech, you know, when it's totally not. Like... I think we mentioned the term cultural appropriation and we were kind of making fun of it. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think if anything, that's what we'll get flagged for. I can't even remember the other shit we talked about. So, but well, YouTube's good. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. Um, are you, have you, what's, uh, have you watched any of the other ones? I watched the first one, and yeah. then I watched one with you and Zobris for a little bit. Dude, it's fun. It's this. This is nice when we're on the phone, you know. But it's yeah. definitely it's definitely better in person. Something about it. Oh yeah, uh, it would have been great to be there in person. I know. Except it's t- you know it's fucking hot here. But um, this is still chill. I'm glad I did it. Mm. What do you got coming up, dude? Um, just basically I got another two weeks over the summer 
like summer class stuff and then this summer I'm just basically be writing a paper man <laughs> that's about it I gotta buy a new car before September because our other car shit the bed so what do you what are you looking to do as a PA what am I looking to get no what what are you looking to do as a PA Oh, um, I'm thinking either, like, surgery or emergency medicine. Yeah. Because I like the idea of emergency medicine. I mean, um, surgery because, you know, it's, it's technical, it's fun, it's, it's cool. But the thing is, sometimes your hours are really terrible and you're always on call and I don't really like that idea of not having downtime where you're just, it's your time, not, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of like waiting to go on a deployment and they're like, oh, don't do anything. You're like, fuck, dude, well, what's, what's the point? I might as well be gone because I can't do anything anyway, so. Yeah, definitely lose some of that pers- but, uh, personal freedom. Yeah, for sure. And then, but emergency medicine looks good too. I like that because it's got, you know, shift work and, you know, you got your hours, you do your shift and then you're done. And then that's it. Your shift comes on. Um, there's a lot of burnout, but I don't know. I think people do it and they don't know where they're getting into, you know? Yeah. Dude, have you, uh, that's it, man. Have, you have you seen the We the Willing stuff? The what? We the willing. No. You know, uh, you know Chris, Chris Nyert. Yeah. Yeah, dude, you gotta check it out. You you're never you're never on. No, it. what is it? You're, you're never on Instagram, dude, right? No. Yeah, that's probably why you don't know. Well, you need to check them out. Check out their website, We the Willing. It's uh one of our bros started this this community it's fucking awesome it's the shirt i'm wearing right now um it's on instagram yeah but they have a website too it's like we the willing.com okay cool i'll definitely check that out definitely i just turned around so uh if you rewatch us or somebody watching this can see the back of the shirt because it's totally legit they made like it's it's oh so you're like filming now yeah dude that's cool yeah, so they can see my picture, that stupid picture. <laughs> I know it's people don't want to know the headache I, I went through to try and get you on here, uh, techno- technologically wise. You're definitely not on, I guess I didn't realize it. I guess I am kind of all over social media compared to you because you're kind of absent, but yeah, I don't, I don't really do that type of stuff, man. I look on, you know, I look at the newspaper here and there, maybe some Facebook once in a while, but. Not too much. Yeah, dude. It's definitely it's it's one of those things where you can you can spend too much time take in, in taking web. Like no, just like where you're people constantly are looking at other people's lives, you know? Oh um, yeah. Dude, it's like no one everybody's into everybody else's yeah. shit. You're like, dude, why don't you look at your own shit? I I just made a, a facebook page like just the other day and it's just another it's just another avenue to spread you know spread this podcast no it has its pluses for sure yeah has its pluses i think if you're putting if you're you're putting out like from yourself it's good when you're when you're creating and you're like you have the people that you follow or whatever that kind of inspire you or whatever but I think it's dangerous for some people to just get sucked up and watching other people's lives like all the fucking time, you know? Oh, absolutely, dude. Like, put the phone down and do something. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> yeah, do something in your fucking life. Go engage with somebody, you know? <laughs> what, yeah. What I, what I like about this is I'm actually, like, engaging with people but also sharing with people. It's also creating something, you know? And... Absolutely. Hopefully somebody listens to this and they're like, holy shit, I need to stop listening to this podcast right now and go do something, 
yeah, I'm talking to you. If if that just <laughs> if that just You're struck a chord with you, you need to turn this yeah. podcast off right now. Go outside, smell the grass, like just bury your face in the grass, pick up some dirt in your hands, and just like rub it around in your fingers for a little bit and disconnect from your phone. Leave your phone inside when you do that. Yeah, just leave it around. Like, don't even bother with it. And just see what happens. I love it when I forget my phone sometimes. I'm like, yes, I don't even have to deal with it. Yeah, fuck it. Well, hey, dude, I really got to take a leak. Is that, are we are we good or? Yeah, dude, if you want to, I mean, we we could be at a stopping point or... I could totally ramble about something while you go take a piss and come back. It's up to you, dude. Yeah, ramble on. Okay, cool. Ramble on. Pot, potty break. Boom. So, um, yeah, I there's this trendy thing called earthing where you are out in nature and you take off your shoes and you just stand in the grass or dirt or whatever it is, sand, ocean, and let your feet touch the ground. And, or you like walk on trails. And I totally started doing that way before I actually knew it was something, but I actually really enjoy it. And I highly suggest other people do that. Just take moments, like when you're, when you're in grass or you're close to nature, trees, dirt, take a second to just plug in and soak it up and put your little feelers out there. Like us as humans species, we've been given these awesome feelers, these sen- right, sensors. Okay. I'm talking about how us as humans, we're basically like, little explorers that somehow evolved on this earth. And we have all these little senses that we're like, basically like little data receptors going out into the earth and collecting all this information, right? We're like constantly collecting information. And so I was basically challenging people when they go outside to like take their shoes off, let their feet get in the dirt and the sand and like in the grass or like put your hands down in it and like really just like, try and connect to something that's natural and not, you know, made by man. Technology. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and feel how amazing it feels like. Let yourself just kind of don't try and think about anything. Just kind of like let your thoughts wonder. And I think it's, that's why I like going to the beach, man. Just going in the ocean. Just fucking dude. I miss the ocean. I miss California, dude. I miss it too, bro. I miss it too. I'm planning on spending some time out there this summer for sure. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah. But I also got a lot of stuff going on, so. Yeah. Are you like racing dune buggies or some shit too? Dude, racing a Jeep. And uh, we got a race coming up. And we got to finish this build. Um, we should, we should be on track to make it. So, uh, that'll be fun. That's cool, man. Me and, uh, Racing Jeeps. That's pretty dope. Me and Zach Zobrist. You remember him from First Recon? Yeah. Tall, yeah. tall dude, yeah. B- banana fingers. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. You watch the podcast with him and everything. Yeah. So like, dude, yeah. we're, yeah, we're, we're teamed up and we're both, we're both super passionate about it and it's like. We're going to win, dude. We're going to actually absolutely destroy some people. Um, so do you just race other Jeeps, or what, who do you race? Yeah, yeah. It's actually, so in this type of racing, it's called Ultra 4, which is like ultimate four-wheel drive racing. And it's a mix between, like, Baja-style racing, you know, like in the desert where they do down, like, in Mexico with those trucks. Um, yeah, yeah. But those are, like, two-wheel drive trucks, right? They just have the wicked front suspensions and they just zoom through the fucking desert ultra four is like that where there's open sections but there's also uh rock crawling technical sections or whatever and they're done all over the u.s so you get like kind of a different style 
depending on where you're racing. Like the main race, the King of the Hammers, is in California. So you get a lot of desert and a lot of like, it's near Fort Irwin. Have you been out there? Yeah. It's fucking, no. it's like you're on Mars or something. Um, so yeah, they, they do, they do it, it there's like the big one, but then I just went to one in Oklahoma. So it was like super muddy. They're going through woods and like, you know, the rock crawling sections are super muddy. And so, yeah, dude, it's, it's fucking, it sounds fun as shit. It's a fucking blast. Do you dude. like, do you win money if you like yeah. win or how does it work? Yeah. You win money, dude. It's, I mean, it's not like. It's not a lot. Like I think a lot of it's it's a sport where you basically that's one of the cool parts about it's it's really a community. It's like a racing community yeah. of people where everybody loves the sport so much that they just like dump a lot of money into it. So I've dumped a lot of money <laughs> into my Jeep build, you know? And it's just like yeah, for the it love looks like you have. For for I, the, I, I was like, Holy shit, this thing looks insane. Yeah. I've had to neglect the Harley for a little bit. There's a lot of things I want to do with that bike, but it's had to take a sideline to the Jeep. Um, but yeah, so, but you, you'll, so it's, it's kind of mixed. It's mixed up. There's like the people who just got rich and don't know what to do with their fucking money. So they just like pay somebody to build them an off-road racing car, you know? So, yeah. which I just learned this last race I was at. I kept on, everybody's referring to their rigs as like racing cars. And I'm thinking like, but this is like four wheel drive off-road racing. Like, why do you call it a car? It doesn't make sense to me. Like, shouldn't it be uh, a truck? Well, no, yeah, it's not, it's not really, it's not really a truck. Uh, yeah, I yeah. guess it is a car. <laughs> like it's a race car, dude. So yeah, they call them race cars, but they're not anything like a car. They're super fast. They all have like, you know, yeah. supercharged LS motors and, um, like these are the high, high, you know, the unlimited class ones I'm in the stock class. So to answer your original question, okay. who I'll be racing, anybody who enters the stock class, you basically can race anything. It could be like a Toyota truck or a Jeep Wrangler, a Jeep Cherokee, um, anything you want to build out. And there's like a bunch of restrictions on what, what you can and can't do. So it's got to like kind of resemble and still be kind of like the stock vehicles meant to be, but you've seen pictures of mine, right? It's like, it, oh, it's, yeah. it still it's looks like it, they're still super capable machines. Um, yeah. But there are restrictions. Like you can only do 35 inch tires, even though I have 36 is on there right now. Like I could probably fit up, up to forties, you know, but there's yeah. little restrictions like that. So, so yeah. it's fun. It's it's a little more. It's it's less money. It's still a lot of money to get into that, that class, but uh, it's definitely more obtainable. And it's uh, you're still racing. So that's awesome, dude. But you're not you're not going as fast as like the top guys who are like screaming through the desert at like over a hundred miles an hour. Like I'll be going. I'm sure you're going 60 fast or 70, you know, like still fast, yeah. but, um, dude, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun just being around that. And like, just, it's going to be nice being with Zach and like us working together as a team, you know, there's a chance you'll roll over and you got to like get your Jeep rolled back over and like keep racing, you know, it's, it's like, it's not like you have to be That's done. Cool. Like you can work through the problems, like getting stuck and all that. Like you just figure it out, so you just figure it out. I like it. I ha, like it. Have you found that, dude? Like problem solving, like on a simple level, is kind of therapeutic for you. Oh yeah, for sure, man. It's always good to know work through a problem. You know, kind of think about the solution. Definitely helps you kind of organize your thoughts. You know. Yeah. Like, what, what would be an example of that for you? I know you've been in school, so that's probably just, like, that would just kind of turn my brain into fucking um, bush, but. I don't know. Maybe, like, 
talking about like medically wise or just everyday life? Wise? Yeah, everyday life. Like, is there anything you find yourself like, man, I need to get my hands yeah. on this thing and fucking fix it. And then you do and you're like, yeah, that felt fucking good. You know? Yeah. Well, I had, I bought a new like road bike cause that's how I get to school and stuff, you know? Um, it's a new, it's a specialized. I like it. Uh, cause it's, you don't want to drive around here, man. The traffic's terrible and parking sucks. So I just like, fuck yeah, I got a road bike. I ride to class. Um, but I've been making like little modifications to the bike and fixing it and putting different like gear, uh, gears on it and like rear derailers and stuff like that. You know, just little things like that. But it, but it feels cool. good. It's not like, it's not like a pain in the ass. It's like, Oh fuck, I gotta do this shit. No, like, it's fun. You know? It's, it's definitely fun, man. Yeah. For sure, it's fun. I've, I've found that like with with brain injuries specifically, I would say, it's going back to simple things instead of like, you know, yeah, it's healthy to try and work like more complex problems and stuff, but going into simple things, and I think that's why I've just like weightlifting in the gym, is you're yeah, doing doing something very man. very simple where it's like, I just need to move this thing from here to there, or I need to like change my brakes or, you know, do this on the Jeep. And then you do it and you're, you're like, you're just kind of very focused in on what you're doing and something about it feels right. And it feels like something about it is therapeutic to me. Um, No, I, I completely agree, man. I completely agree. I'm with you on that. Dude, what are your what are your thoughts on pot? Or weed oh boy. marijuana? You know, I'm all about having uh legalizing it, dude. You know that. So um, what do you know what states right now are have legalized the, it? The entire West Coast is legal. Really? I I know Oregon just did, right? Alaska, Alaska Washington, Oregon and California are all legal. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Texas is actually talking about it. I, I thought they would be like the last holdout or something, but I think they actually might be, uh, getting ready to pass like it medical? here. Like medical? Um. Medical? They're I think, not gonna go I think medical first, but dude, I think, I think they're, yeah. they're looking to go, which is kind of surprising to me. I mean, Austin's pretty, pretty liberal, dude, but it's it's not even like I mean there's there's liberals there's Democrats who are super against it and it's all it's all that drug company money dude but yeah which is sick no I mean it's it's going that way man they can't fight it it's it's going that way where they're just gonna be like you know well all their arguments against against it or be like well you know it's going to lead to this this and this and they're like actually it hasn't because you have states that have legalized it for quite some time and none of that shit came true yeah so there's really no compelling reason not to do it yeah and colorado is making an absolute fortune off of it <laughs> It's just politics, man. Yeah, if if they looked at the money, I think that's I think that's honestly why Texas is considering it. They're like, wait, we could be making tons of money off of this. Like, why don't we approve it? You know? Yeah, it doesn't make sense not to. Yeah. Um. But uh, hey, dude, I am gonna have to cut this because I gotta get up early tomorrow. Right on, dude. Dude, um, this has been awesome. Had a we'll, great time. Well, uh, I definitely want to talk about this some more and uh, talk about just kind of what sure. CBD's done for me and stuff like that. But uh, oh yeah, and yeah. I think you're part good. two. Get me on yeah. there for part two. Yeah, dude. So we definitely got a part two coming up. But yeah, let's just go ahead and wrap this one up for tonight. And All right, man. Call it. Well, uh, thanks, dude. It's been dude, fun. It's been a pleasure talking with you and. I'll be talking to you soon. Bye, dude. Later. All right. Later, bro.